boys and girls. My name is Miss Caitlin with Child Evangelism Fellowship of Eastern Pennsylvania. I'm really excited to be able this year to share with you about Jesus from God's own word, the Bible. Now, it's really sad that this year, maybe you can't have a normal Good News Club experience attending a Good News Club in person, but I'm very excited to be able to share with you a Bible lesson um, in this way online. So before we get started, I have a question for you. I want you to think about, can you think about this? Do you know who Jesus Christ is? Jesus is the most wonderful and important person that has ever lived, but he's not like everyone else. In fact, Jesus, he is different. Today, you're going to hear an exciting story about the way his life on this earth began. Many, many years ago, God sent an angel to a town called Nazareth. Can you say that with me? Nazareth. That angel's name was Gabriel, and he had a very special job. We call him a messenger angel because his job was to send, give messages from God to people. One day, he had some very important news to tell. He came to a woman. God told him he needed to go to this woman. And she was a special woman because she was the great, 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 great granddaughter of a special king, King David. But she now was a very, she was a poor girl and she lived in a town that was in a time of trouble. Her people, the Israelites, they had been under the authority of their enemies for quite a while. And nobody had heard a message from God in a long time. So Mary must have been amazed when an angel appeared to her. In fact, it must have been kind of scary because this is what the Bible says the angel said to her when he first appeared. It says in the Bible, and the angel said unto her, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Well, Mary, she was a little confused. She said, she, well, maybe she said, or maybe she just thought, I don't know, but maybe she thought something like this. She thought, what kind of greeting is that? Can you say that with me? What kind of greeting is that? Well, the angel, he said um, to her, he said, don't be afraid. God is pleased with you and he has chosen you for a special job. You see, God, he had a special job for Mary and he wanted her to be able to do something amazing because he loved her so much. Did you know that that's true for you too? God loves you so very, very much. In fact, it even tells us in the Bible that God has loved you since even before this world began. That's a lot of love, isn't it? Well, God, he loved Mary too, and he had chosen her to do something very special for him. The angel told her about it. He said to her, he said, Mary, you will conceive in your womb and you will have a son and you will call his name Jesus. He will be great. He will be called son of the highest and he will rule as king over Israel forever. Well, Mary must have tried to understand what he was saying. She said this. She said, how can this be? I've never even been with a man. Mary, she wasn't married. She could, hadn't been with the man. So how could she have a baby? Well, the angel Gabriel told her how he said the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And that is why the Holy One that will be, you will give birth to will be called the Son of God. And then he told her something else amazing. He said this. He said, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. She had never had, or uh, Mary's cousin Elizabeth had never had a baby and she was an old lady now, but God was going to allow her to have a baby, even though she had never been able to before. And she was too old in, um, in most people's minds. And then the angel said this, I want you to listen carefully. He said, with God, nothing will be impossible. Can you say that with me? With God, nothing will be impossible. When Mary heard this, she had something to say. She said this, she said, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it happen to me just as you have said. You see, Mary, she believed what God said, what he said, sent the angel to say to her. She knew that God was asking her to do something amazing. And she was ready to do it. You see, 
that's true for, for you too. If you have asked Jesus to be your savior, you should be ready to do whatever God asks you to do. The little boy in this picture, he's very excited because his friend has let him play with his special toy. God wants you to be ready to do whatever God asks you to do. Just like Mary, she was ready to do what God wanted her to do. But maybe she thought about it and she thought, what had the angel meant? She was going to have a baby without a man to be the father. You see, God, he was going to do a miracle. Through the power of God's Holy Spirit, the baby that she would have would be both God and man at the same time. You see, Jesus is God's son. And he lived on this earth without ever, ever doing anything wrong. He never sinned, not even one time. Jesus, he's perfect. And he is God's son. That means that Jesus, he's different than anyone else. But there's even more. You see, the angel also said that Jesus would be king. Mary knew that God had promised to send a savior who would rescue her people and rule over them as king. And for many, many years, people had been watching and waiting for Jesus. Well, Mary just couldn't keep this good news to herself. She remembered what else the angel had said to her about her cousin, Elizabeth. So maybe, maybe she jumped up really fast. Can you pretend to be Mary right now? Jump up right out of your seat really fast. And she left home and maybe she hurried. Can you pretend to hurry down the road? Hurried to go to Elizabeth's town. And as soon as she arrived, maybe she called out something like this. Maybe she said, hello, Elizabeth. Can you say that with me? Hello, Elizabeth. Good job. Go ahead and sit down. Well, as it tells us in the Bible that as soon as Elizabeth heard Mary's voice, she felt something inside of her. You see the baby that was in her moved when he heard Jesus or Mary's voice. God had told Elizabeth and her husband that the baby that Elizabeth would have would announce to all the people that the promised one, the Savior, had come. Even before he was born, he was helping people to know that the promised one was there. As soon as Mary came in and Elizabeth felt the baby move, she said this. This is what Elizabeth said. She said, blessed are you among all women. And blessed is the baby who will come from you. Blessed are you for believing God and that he will do everything that he has told you to do. Well, Mary, oh, she must have felt so happy that someone understood, that Elizabeth understood um, who the baby would be. It tells us in the Bible that Mary began to sing a song of praise to God. And this, I'm going to read to you out of the Bible part of her song. This is what she said. She said, my soul doth magnify the Lord and my spirit hath rejoiced in God, my Savior. And then she sang even more of more of a song like that. You see, Mary, she was so happy. She was so thankful that God has done mighty things for her. And she said, his name is holy. Mary, she had a special job to do. She was going to be the mother on this earth of the Savior. Mary and Elizabeth, they were so thankful that God had asked both of them to do something very special for him. And they were ready to do the job that God had given to them. Did you know that if you have asked Jesus to be your Savior, that that is true for you too? If you've asked Jesus to be your savior, you should do whatever God asks you to do. Just like the friend of the little boy in the picture allowed him to play with his new toy. He shared. He was being kind. And that is something that God wanted him to do. It says in the Bible, it says, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. That means that you need to make sure when you read the Bible and you learn what it says in the Bible, that you are ready to do what it says. So maybe like the little boy in this picture, a friend of yours wants to play with something that is yours. If you've read God's word, the Bible, and you have Jesus as your savior, then you will know that God wants you to be kind to others, to share with others. And you can do that. Or maybe there's a kid at school that maybe the other kids aren't so nice to him. Maybe he's new at school and the other kids haven't been so friendly. If you've asked Jesus to be your savior, then 
Uh, maybe you've read in God's word that God wants you to be friendly to other people. You can be friends with that child. You can help them to feel uh, welcome at your school. Ooh, here's another one maybe you can do. Um, maybe a friend of yours, I'm, I'm sorry, maybe your brother or sister or your cousin were told that they were supposed to do some chores and help you. You were both supposed to do them together. And maybe this other person isn't doing what they're supposed to do. Maybe you're the only one doing the chore. Do you think you should stop doing that? If you've asked Jesus to be your savior and you've read God through the Bible, then you know that you're supposed to do what you're told, even if other people aren't doing it. Well, you have a special job to do whatever God has asked you to do if you have Jesus as your savior. And Mary and Elizabeth, they both had a special job that God wanted them to do as well. They were ready to do what God wanted them to do. Well, it tells us in the Bible that Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months. And maybe she was staying there uh, until Elizabeth had her baby. The little baby John was born. But then Mary knew that it was time. It was time for her to go back home because oh, there was someone there. Someone there who was waiting for her. You see, Mary, she was engaged to someone. And in Bible times, when someone was engaged to someone, it was just as serious of a promise as if they had already been married. The only difference was they, um, they didn't live together until after the wedding ceremony. So Mary, she was engaged to someone. So what would Joseph, the man she was engaged to, say when he found out that she was pregnant? After all, nothing like this had ever happened before. Well, soon as, as soon as Mary got back, Joseph realized that Mary was pregnant and he knew that he wasn't the father. Maybe he wondered if Mary had sinned because she was pregnant, even though they weren't married. But Mary hadn't done this kind of sin that Joseph thought she had. Now, she probably didn't always do the right thing because it tells us in the Bible, it says, all we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. That means that every single person in the world, that includes you and that includes me, has sinned, has broken God's rules. Now, what is a sin? A sin is anything that you think or say or do that is not right in God's sight. Maybe one day your mom tells you it's time to get ready for bed, turn off the TV, but you decide to watch the TV for five more minutes until your show's over and you don't obey mom right away like she wants you to? Did you know that when you don't listen to what your mom or dad or the person in charge of you says, when you don't do it right away, that that is a sin? Or maybe somebody does something that makes you really angry and so you yell at them and to show that you're angry and maybe you say some mean words. Did you know that that's a sin? Or maybe your teacher tells you to do something that you don't want to do. And so you cross your arms and you pound, maybe you stamp your feet. Did you know that that's a sin? Well, maybe you never did any of the sins that I just said, but I bet you can think of something you've done that's a sin. So it tells us in God's word, the Bible, that every single person, including you and me, has sinned, has broken God's rules. Well, Mary, she wasn't perfect. She had sinned but she hadn't done the kind of sin that Joseph thought she did. But since Joseph was such a kind and fair man, he decided to, or he, he thought about what he should do. He decided that he was going to give her um, a certificate of divorce. He was going to tell her that they weren't going to get married. And he fell asleep. But that night an angel appeared to him and in a dream after he'd gone to sleep, and this is what the angel said. I'm going to read it to you from the Bible. He said, fear not, Joseph, to take Mary to be your wife. She shall bring forth a son and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. He said the baby that she's going to have is going to be the son of God and that Joseph should still marry Mary. What did it mean when he said that he shall save his people from their sins? It meant that Jesus, when he grew up to be a man, without ever doing anything wrong, remember Jesus, he lived a perfect life. He never thought or said or did anything wrong. And then Jesus, 
he, it tells us in the Bible, he died on a cross. Not because he'd done something wrong, but because he wanted to make a way that you and I could have our sins forgiven, cleaned away. It says in the Bible, it says, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. It means that Jesus, he died on the cross, took the punishment for sins. And then his friends, they took his body off the cross, and they buried it in a tomb. And three days later, Jesus came alive again, and he went up into heaven to be with God, and he's never, ever going to have to die again. Jesus did this so that there could be a way that people could have their sins forgiven. When Joseph woke up, he knew that God had sent him that dream, had sent that angel in a dream to him. And he hurried over, he must have hurried over to tell Mary that they were going to still get married. And soon they did have that wedding ceremony and they became husband and wife. It must have been so exciting for them to wait for that baby to be born. Well, Mary and Joseph, they were ready to do whatever God asked them to do. And I wonder, if you've asked Jesus to be your Savior, are you ready to do whatever God asks you to do? Remember, it says in the Bible, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. So if your friend wants to um, share a toy with, or if your friend would like you to share a toy, maybe you can do that. You can show that kindness that God wants you to show. Maybe you can be friends with that new kid at school. Or maybe even though your cousin or brother or sister who's supposed to be helping you with the chore, maybe they don't choose to help. You can still do that. You can still do the thing that God has asked you to do. Are you ready to do that? Well, maybe you're thinking, Miss Caitlin, I can't think of a time in my life when I've ever asked Jesus to be my savior. Here's something the Bible tell, has to say to you. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, that means the people in the world, that's you and me, that he gave his only begotten son, his only son, Jesus, that whosoever believeth in him, anybody who trusts Jesus to be their savior, should not perish which means be separated from God forever, but have everlasting life, forever life in heaven with God when life on this earth is over. Can you think of a time in your life when you've ever asked Jesus to be your savior? If not, I wonder, do you know that you have sinned? Do you believe that Jesus died on the cross and gave his own precious blood to take the punishment for your sin? That he came alive again after three days? If you believe that, and you've never asked Jesus to be your savior before, I wonder, are you ready to do that today? If you are, then you can pray in your heart and you can tell God, you can say, dear God, I know that I have sinned. I believe Jesus died to take the punishment for my sins and that he came alive again. I would like to ask Jesus to forgive my sins and be my savior. In Jesus name, amen. You can say some words like that, or you can say some words that are similar to that, but I want you to know, it's not saying words that ask Jesus to be your savior, but really believing those things in your heart. Well, maybe you've done that. Maybe you just did that today. If you have, you can contact us in the description underneath of this video. You can send us an email or call us and let us know that you've done that. We will be so excited to hear from you. And I hope that you tune back in next week to hear the next part of our story. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.